Hello, this is another video rebuttal from Nakdimon to Khalid Yassin. Today we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer. Ever wondered why Khalid Yassin doesn't debate Christians but only like to lecture about them? This video will demonstrate just why he never debates. See, in lectures you can say all kinds of things without ever being challenged about anything you say. But in debates, you actually get challenged on the things you claim. Let's look at Khalid Yassin's lecture on the message of Jesus and see if what he says actually holds any weight. As to his message, the message of Jesus Christ was a simple message. A simple message. He said to his people when they asked him, Oh, Rabbi, teach us how to pray. He said, I will teach you how to pray. And you Christians here, you recite along with me. You remember the Lord's Prayer. You didn't forget that. What did he say? Now, there's so much to say about these 30 to 40 seconds alone that demonstrate why this man doesn't debate anyone. First, Khalid Yassin claims to know anything about the message of Yeshua, the Messiah. But how does he know anything about the message of Yeshua? Elsewhere, he totally repudiates all the Gospel writers saying that their testimonies don't count. But now, he uses the same Gospel writers to say something about the message of Yeshua. As if he says, I will repudiate Matthew, Mark, Luke and John when they destroy my case, but I will use them nonetheless when they seem to support me. He can't use any of the Gospels for proof as long as he doesn't recognize them as authentic. Second, since Yassin as a Muslim believes that the Gospels are corrupted, how does he know that the Lord's Prayer isn't a hoax? How does he know that the Lord's Prayer is an authentic prayer and not a corrupted part that had nothing to do with the original message of Yeshua? Third, I thought Yeshua was a Muslim, yet Khalid Yassin calls him, correctly so, a rabbi. I have never seen an Islamic rabbi. There are only Jewish rabbis that adhere to Judaism, which destroys the whole Jesus was a Muslim myth. Fourth, this was a model prayer. This was also not a prayer that Yeshua prayed himself, but a prayer that he taught his disciples. So this entire prayer used by Khalid Yassin to demonstrate how Yeshua prayed wasn't even meant for that, because it was not how he prayed. He said to them, when you pray, then pray thus. Now let's see what Khalid Yassin has to say about this model prayer. He said, Our Father who art in heaven. He didn't say, My Father who I'm with in heaven. This is truly amazing. Didn't Yassin himself just say that people ask him to teach them to pray? Well then why should he put the emphasis on himself? So no, he didn't say, My Father, because he's teaching them to pray. But this is how Yeshua speaks about himself in relation to the Father. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Hallowed be, praise be, thy name. Not my name and our name, but thy name. No, that's because he taught them to pray, Yassin. Why would he teach them a prayer that glorifies God and them? This is what he said about his own name, though. 
For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Thy kingdom come, not my kingdom come, but thy kingdom come. Yes, and that's again because the people that he teaches to pray don't have a kingdom. He teaches them to pray, remember? But there are a few examples about Yeshua speaking about his kingdom. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory, so that you may eat and drink at My table in My kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Thy will be done on earth where I am and you are, as it is in heaven where you are only God. Where does he get the where I am stuff from? And I will say it again. Yeshua is teaching the people to pray. This phrase is nothing more than the desire of those who pray this prayer, the people, that God's will be done everywhere, in heaven and on earth. So this objection makes no sense whatsoever. Give us this day our daily bread. That means me my mother and all the human beings give all of us this day our daily bread and give us something to drink afterwards I think this is the best part give us this day our daily bread me and my mother where Khalid Yassin refers to the Quranic claim that we supposedly believe that Mary is part of the Trinity but then I ask can any Muslim Whoever he is, explain to me when Mary ever in any point in history was part of the Trinity. The Quran claims this in Surah 5, verse 73 through 75 and in verse 116. And that's where Khalid Yassin is referring to. But alas, the Quran is terribly wrong about this and with this error, about basic facts the Quran is demonstrated to have a purely human origin this just shows that the author of the Quran whoever he may have been was completely ignorant of what others believe because that goes along with bread Jesus not asking for bread and you and I are not gonna ask for bread and don't drink water so if Jesus and his mother said give us this day our daily bread that means they had to eat they had to drink and like you and I when we eat and drink the body uses a portion of it and what the body doesn't use we defecate and urinate can you imagine God defecating and urinating well no I can't imagine God in his glory defecating and urinating but I can not imagine that if the eternal Son of God comes down and takes on upon himself human form that he does everything the human body does also so if the logos the word of God takes upon himself human form I can see that he does what the human body does which is answering to the call of nature but this requires a proper understanding of what we believe when it comes to the triune God and not a distortion or total misrepresentation of it as the Quran does and Muslims subsequently do as we have just seen Khalid Yassin doing it give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses now God ain't trespasses against nobody well that's entirely correct God doesn't sin against anyone and that demonstrates that this is not how Yeshua prayed because he never sinned and even in Islam he is sinless 
So this entire performance of Khalid Yassin is nothing but a charade and proves nothing that he tries to prove. So, yeah, God doesn't trespass against nobody. Well, in Islam, Isa never transgressed against nobody. So if God doesn't transgress against anyone, and Isa didn't transgress against anyone, then what are you objecting to?